Yes, yes, so Hell is here. Today we have an interesting one. It's been recommended to me far less than some of the other songs by this artist, but from what I've been told, this is as true a representation of Dimash's singing as you can physically get. So I'm very much looking forward to it. It is Dimash singing the theme to Schindler's List. He's accompanied on the piano by Nathan Wang. Now, I didn't know who Nathan Wang was, so I gave him a Google. He's an established musician and composer, has composed for a lot of things, actually. I don't know anything about this. It says it's from Los Angeles last year, 2023. I don't know why Dimash is working with Nathan. I don't know why they're choosing to do this bit of music. The music itself, though, the theme from Schindler's List, oh, I love it, ever since I first saw that film. It's a John Williams masterpiece, in my opinion. Now, every day when I work, more often than not, I'm listening to my classical playlist. It's not strictly classical, there's a lot of contemporary music on there, and the theme from Schindler's List is on there. So I must have listened to it hundreds of times in the background whilst I've been working. Schindler's List is a film with extremely heavy subject matter, extremely sad. A violin plays the melody, and we all know about violins and sad music. There are loads of memes about it. I love this scene from Sponge of when I was a kid. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. So I'm curious to see what Dimash does here in terms of pitch. Is he going to sing in the same key at the same pitch? I presume he'll sing at pitch because he, well, because he's Dimash. And I can only imagine that hearing Dimash singing this wonderful piece of music will be a beautiful experience. So I think let's just get straight into it. <laughs> he gave there. This is a fairly short video so let's just continue to the end and then we can discuss it afterwards. What a cheeky little look. <laughs> oh, that's a nice, nice one, isn't it? I like that it's different, this this raw video footage. Yeah, very nice, very nice. All right, well, let's go back and pick out some of the most prominent parts of it. So this video starts a bit into the music. The introduction from the original theme is omitted. I guess we'll never know what happened there, if Nathan Wang played the introduction or not, if Dimash sung with the introduction or not. Now, I won't talk about the introduction too much because we don't see it, but I do think the introduction sets up the rest of the music, the part that Dimash sings, in a really really interesting way and I do think it is worth mentioning. So the original, it starts in A minor but then the introduction ends in A major. So we've gone from to 
Minor is sad, very fitting with this bit of music. Major is happy, not so fitting with this bit of music considering the subject matter. This change to the major at the end is called a ties de Picardy, or a Picardy third as most people probably know it. That just means when you have a piece of music that's in minor, sad, and you finish in major, happy. Now this isn't the end of the piece, so I guess I'm technically using it incorrectly, but it is the end of the introduction, which is almost separate to the rest of the music, so that's why I'm choosing to call it a ties de Picardy. So as I said, we've gone from minor, sad, to major, happy, quite strange considering the dark undertones of this music as a whole, but to add further conflict to the emotions, right here when we change to the major, we hear the note F above a 4-3 suspension, cue Sir Hellas from the future to show you visually what that means on a piano. So here is the 4-3 suspension, if this is note number 1, 2, 3, 4, so the 4th note moves to the 3rd note, 4-3 but he also includes this F up here, so it sounds like this. So we're finishing the introduction in A major. And then when the violin comes in, we've now changed to D minor. So from here to here. So this is why the introduction, I think, plays a really important part in setting up the melody that Dimash is about to sing. I wanted to include that because I think it is important contextually. I think that the introduction stirs us up a little bit emotionally through the conflicting musical messages that we're receiving, which then makes the theme played by the violin or Dimash even more powerful and impactful. Okay, that's enough about the introduction, now on to Dimash. Instead of singing in the key of D, as we just saw, Dimash is singing in the key of G. <laughs> D to G, whether you choose to go lower or higher, it's pretty much midway always between the next Ds. So it's pretty much as far away in terms of keys from the original as you can be. Interestingly, Dimash chooses to start on the G above the D. You know, he could have started below the D and then he would have been starting here. And I think that's great because it means he's going to be singing higher. We are also missing the first part of the violin melody. It comes in on the repeat of the first phrase, which is higher up in pitch in general. So instead of coming in on this bit, we get this bit. Which again means we hear Dimash immediately higher. He adjusts the melody there. He does this. So he sings these notes, which is four notes down, but the melody in the original is actually five notes down there, so that would sound like... Because Dimash is going down four notes instead of five, it's a smaller interval, it's a smaller jump between the notes, so it feels less jumpy, the melody feels more whole. I spoke about similar melodic adjustments Dimash does in my last reaction, actually, which was Diva Dance. If you haven't seen that already, please do check it out, card up here. And then we keep going. And then this bit is very hard to sing. It's that repeated interval, jumping up and down, up and down, which is a major sixth. I always say that this particular interval is very, very catchy. I don't know why, I just find it catchy. It's used prominently in a number of famous songs. So this is the interval. If you think of jingle bells dashing through the snow. Dashing through the snow. My bonnie lies over the ocean. Or for another piece of music by the same composer, John Williams, where he uses it, it would be Princess Leia's theme from Star Wars. So obviously John Williams likes this interval too. What did Nathan Wang say? It's a shame I can't understand what he's saying there. I listened a few times, but I didn't catch it. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. Whatever he said though, Dimash listens and then Nathan proceeds to play a lovely little piano interlude. <laughs> where he's rhythmically augmented the Schindler's List theme, which means that he's taken the, the rhythms of the melody and just made them longer. And then after the piano part, Dimash comes in again. And this part, I'm not going to lie, I'm not exactly sure what it is or where it's from. There's no immediately obvious connection to the Schindler's List theme, as in there are small sections of two or three notes that can be taken from the theme, but overall it's not immediately obvious. It's more of a free-sounding melody. <laughs> Thank you. 
again, without context, it's difficult to say exactly what's going on here. I'd, I'd love to know what Nathan Wang said just beforehand. It almost sounds a bit improvised, just two unbelievable musicians feeding off each other in the moment. Now, this video as a whole, overall, I really, really love it. We all know Dimash's range is absurd. He can sing any voice part by definition, but the more absurd thing is that he can sing any voice part while sounding natural. For example, a natural bass might be able to sing a tenor melody at a tenor pitch, but it won't sound natural. It will sound like a bass singing a tenor part and vice versa. Obviously, there are exceptions, but generally speaking. So to hear this whole performance in Dimash's head voice is a real treat, at least for me. I really, really like it and just fully appreciate how rare it is for a fully grown man to have a tombra when singing at those pitches like this. It's just angelic. So we had this phrase. <laughs> I want to focus on the first note. Here he is singing this C. That C there, in other performances, again depending on the performance and the context, he will often use a blended voice, either mostly his chest voice with a bit of the head voice in there, or half and half. This note here, that's the very same wow moment, that tenor top C that I always include a clip of in my videos when Dimash is singing that note as a tenor. When he sings it as a tenor, it's usually at the end of the phrase, at a height, at the climax, power, a part that music has been building towards. Here now, the musical context is completely different. It's the start of the phrase, gentle. He's using a completely different type of voice and he's ascending up from here instead of to here. And he's going up to this G which is one note lower than what your typical chorus that is expected to sing. And then we get the next phrase and I want to point out one part of it. That top part, it might have sounded a little bit dissonant in relation to the accompaniment. You'll see how Dimash starts that note powerfully with heavy vibrato, a rich tone, and then halfway through, he changes the note to no vibrato and a bit of a lighter sound. Let's hear that again. And then he makes this hand action and looks at Nathan Wang as he makes that note change. And then after the note change, he comes on with a bit more power again. If they are improvising, it's cool because Dimash has just performed a suspension here, like we saw with that little piano clip I played earlier. To explain a suspension in words, it's where you hold one note into a chord so this note doesn't belong in this chord, and then you move that note to a note that does belong in the chord. It's a method of musical tension when it doesn't belong, and then resolution when it does belong, it does fit in. Dimash's tension note is that top note there. He starts powerfully, but then he adjusts halfway through. Maybe to not make it overbearing, to reduce the tension a bit, before the resolution, which is that second note. Notice how he looks at Nathan as he does that hand movement, almost as if he's kind of explaining what he's doing. The hand in like a nod kind of thing. That's just the impression I get. And we do get plenty of suspensions in the original theme. Let me find an example. So here we get the suspension. And the notes are these. So listen out for that, because after it happens, the cello then repeats it. Usually you just get one suspension at a time, not repeated back to back. So John Williams in this composition is really kind of driving them in. Tension, tension, tension. That top note there, this A. That's your typical expected top note for a chorus that to sing. Dimash sounds a little hesitant on it. This isn't a performance, it's a behind the scenes phone recording, so maybe he's just preserving his voice. Again, having absolutely no context as to why they're here is a bit weird. I want to know why this is happening. And then we get this phrase, which is a lot more airy. <laughs> I love it when he chooses to use that airy voice just like he did in Ikenaida. Ikenaida is definitely up there with one of my favourite Dimash performances I've seen so far. If you haven't seen my reaction, check it out, cut up here. And then in true Dimash style, we get some nice scrunchy tension at a moment of peaceful music, really nice music. That note there. What's happening here? The piano is playing a D major chord, but Dimash is singing the F natural. In D major, it's the F sharp that makes it major happy. It's the F natural that makes it minor sad. So we have the happy chord in the piano, and then Dimash singing this note, scrunchy. And then this moves to G minor. So we go from two, 
This type of clash and chord movement is called an English cadence for anyone who's interested. It was a technique employed by various English composers during the Renaissance period. And then Dimash stops and then we get a nice outro on the piano, which is nice. You know, Dimash is letting Nathan play and just enjoy the music. <laughs> Before, of course, the ending. <laughs> Again, I don't know what they said there, but we have that sudden ending. If anyone has OCD that requires musical closure, that is probably not for you. I like it though. It shows they're enjoying themselves, they're having fun, and they're just having a laugh right after this lovely music making session. Yeah, I really, really like that. Quite different to the usual Dimash performances I've seen. Raw footage, can't beat it. And it's just a testament to Dimash's voice. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you to everyone who recommended that one. Let me know which other performances by Dimash you'd like me to react to. As always, thank you for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe. If you enjoy my content and want to support me, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked below. And I will see you next time.